What's going on guys? Today I want to talk about probably the most asked question in all of my videos and that is how in the world do you have so many symbols? You guys always see in my videos I have more symbols or sometimes pads than what the strike you know technically allows. Um, you know it's it, it's not a big secret but you know if you guys are interested in this video I'm going to cover everything you need to know about hooking up and setting up your splitter and that looks like this and it's actually a stereo splitter but this particular one is what I usually recommend because the company makes them specifically for e-drums electronic drums and there's some other ones I think they're by Hosa H-O-S-A and those are just regular splitters some people say those work but I always recommend these because as you can see uh, in the picture you know one is labeled head one's labeled rim you can't mistake it and they work. I've used them on the Roland modules uh, besides the TD25 that doesn't allow splitting unfortunately. So today we're going to be setting up my left splash symbol and that's going to be split off of the high tom here. Really quick, you know, this splitter that I have here has a male end so this would plug right into the back of the module and then you'd run two cables from there. There's another one that has a female end so you could have the actual splitter on the rack somewhere and then have two smaller cables going to you know your two different pads but this is the one that I have for today so the first thing you want to do obviously is hook up your splitter now this one like I said plugs into the back of the module and then I'll use the existing cable that goes to the tom going to the head zone that's labeled head and you'll need an additional cable to, to hook up your extra pad obviously because you need another cable for another pad but that will go in the input labeled rim and it's as simple as that you just plug it in and it doesn't matter uh, you can use a stereo or a mono cable since both of these are going to be mono it'll work either way I actually have my same stereo cable going to my high tom so you know it works I'm just going to hook this up real quick and we'll go from there okay so now my high tom is hooked up to the head zone of the splitter and my extra symbol here is hooked into the rim zone of the splitter now how I like to set up my extra pads you know specifically symbols we're talking about today but the same can go with toms is that you pick a symbol or a tom that's already set up and you use it as a template on how it reacts and you know how the triggering responses and everything so today I'm going to be matching my splash symbol to the crash and you know obviously you're going to start by changing the sound on the splash symbol because it's probably going to be like a tom or a rim or something like that obviously you don't want that on your symbol so i've already got it set up with the same sound as my crash so i just want you to hear that and you can hear how it's not exactly the same yet we got some more work to do So obviously you can tell you know they don't sound they're not reacting exactly the same so the next thing you want to do is go into your trigger settings on just the zone of your extra pad and you'll probably notice it's set up way different than how your crash is in this instance the sensitivity is way up just because it was a rim zone and I don't need that to be that sensitive you can notice I was just tapping it and it sounded like I was hitting it really hard um, this one was way up at 60 so I'm gonna drop that down um, just because I know I've already went through but you pretty much want to drop it down until it reacts the same as your crash symbol so a light light touch should be light you know and really hard one hit should sound like you're smashing the symbol so um, let's try that I just lowered the sensitivity um, I cut it in half I, I thought this was pretty close So I feel like they're reacting much closer to each other. Um, you know, I was able to do a, a crescendo just with a couple of hits on each of them. Obviously, the biggest difference was the volume. The extra one was a little bit louder. But again, you know, the first thing you want to do is set up the way that it plays. So now we're just going to go and adjust the volume to make sure that the, the loudest hit on my extra cymbal uh, matches that one. So I just lowered the volume. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so that that's pretty close. Um, I I'm pretty happy with that, and you know, if you wanted to go a little bit further, you can maybe try changing the curve. But in this case, since I am trying to emulate a splash symbol, it's actually a smaller symbol. Um, you know, in real life, a smaller symbol, you would have a natural type curve. You know, on the symbol, if you can imagine 
to get a really loud sound out of a big cymbal, you have to hit a lot harder than you would a smaller cymbal. So this is kind of emulating that, um, that, it, that this is a smaller cymbal. And so I'm keeping it actually on log one, which it was at from the rim. So um, yeah, now all you do from there is you change this to the symbol that you want to use and, you, and you're pretty much set up, you're ready to go. So probably should have mentioned this earlier, but before you set up your splitter, you definitely want to be mindful of what tom you're splitting off of because the only drawback I think of splitters is that you can't hit both zones at once. So, you know, especially if you're adding a tom, you don't want it to be right next to the other one or right where you're going to do, uh, you know, you don't want to accidentally hit those at the same time because one won't make a sound. Um, but I've, you know, I, I split this one with the high tom splash over here. Uh, this one split with this tom and I've, I haven't run into any issues ever. So. Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a rare thing, but you definitely should keep that in mind if you choose to add splitters. And the last thing I want to say is definitely check your module. Look it up online somewhere. Uh, most modules are you can split the zones, but you know, one of mine before the Roland TD25, you couldn't split. Um, I mean, you can split if you want it, but you can't choose a different sound for the rim zone. So, you know, pretty much wouldn't be doing anything there. Anyways, so for all you guys out there asking me how I add so many symbols, this is exactly how I do it, step by step, the process. And I'll definitely put a link in the description where you can get that splitter. Um, you know, again, you can also look up and see if you can use some other ones. But those are made specifically for e-drums, so I usually just recommend those. But yeah, hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys soon.